Would the congregation please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for, for you. We do not grieve as those who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with him. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Annie. And to all your servants who, having finished their courses in faith, now rest from their labor. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death, ever learning from you to love less and less the things of this world and to love more and more the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
You may be seated. And just before, I hope you got it. He's, Pastor Morgan's going to actually press the play button from there. But I want you to just make note of it if you haven't looked in your bulletin. The, the song is actually a recorded song from Dana Believes, the f- mid 50s perhaps, when um, the Relative Quartet was singing and playing uh, on the radio and the like. Uh, this was, song was written by John Q and his sister Rita and played uh, and sung by um, Hubert and Annie as well in, in there. So it's a four part uh, relative quartet. The song is A Home for My Soul. see quite a few of you smiling as you remember those voices of yesteryear. We heard from their voices. Now let's hear from the voice of God through scripture readings, his holy word. Uh, For a kind of a medley of Psalms to begin with, beginning with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. And the second reading chosen uh, was Psalm 46, verse 10, which is um, part of the great psalm that 
Our last hymn will be based on a mighty fortress. Psalm 46, verse 10 reads, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Again, this is the word of the Lord. And the final one will be another entire psalm, uh, Psalm 116. Actually, the last words I were able to read in the room with uh, the family there on last week, and so we read. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was surrounded by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O oh my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I said, I am greatly afflicted. And in my dismay I said, all men are liars. Yet how can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O oh Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Again, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the final reading is the Gospel of St. John. 20th chapter after Jesus was raised from the dead and after he appeared uh, first to Mary Magdalene he appears to his disciples and we read a portion of that now Thomas called Didymus one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And John records these words for us. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the, the hymn, hymn number 763, When Peace Like a River. Thank you.
Hannah and Pam, Eric and Isaac, and brothers and sisters in Christ of Bethel and family. You may have heard it hundreds of times, but God's grace, his mercy, which I'll focus on just a moment, and his peace be with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have peace today to say it is well with our soul. The word of God that I want us to focus on is the one that was read earlier, Psalm 116, verse 1 specifically. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Here ends the text. There's a famous story, I think I've used it in a regular Sunday sermon once, but never in a funeral sermon, but I thought after getting to know Annie as well as I have the last 16 years, and especially the last probably 12 years, uh, 11 years, sorry, since uh, John Q. passed away, and when she was more homebound, getting to know her better, and then also talking with Dana and you guys, I thought it would be appropriate. It's the story of uh, the French... Uh, leader, military leader, and statesman, Napoleon. Supposedly a, a man had been caught up for treason, was brought before him. And he was given a chance to speak on his own behalf. And he cried out to Napoleon and said, Sir, please have mercy on me. And Napoleon supposedly responded, you don't deserve mercy. And the man responded, I know. That's why I'm crying out for it. You see, that's what mercy is. Mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. This young man who was standing before Napoleon who had the authority to give him the just punishment, knew that he deserved it, that he deserved the punishment for treason. But he was begging for mercy. And every Christian who understands our standing before God cries out the same. I don't deserve mercy. That's why I'm crying out for you to have it on me. And I truly believe that's what caused Annie, and John Q for that matter, to be such faithful members of Bethel. When I was in college and seminary, when I was starting to get older and old enough to where I took note of older people, because, you know, as teenagers and preteens, you typically don't, but you're starting to notice some more. I noticed that John Q and Annie were there. I couldn't miss John Q because John Q always, along with one other saint of God, would always say to me, Eric, you did a pretty good job, but slow down and speak up. I, without fail, every Sunday I would preach or lead services here, John Q would say that. And I, that's one of my fond memories of him. And it was good for me to hear that as a Young guy, and still from time to time, I need to be reminded of that as I get excited. I speak fast. I talk slow. But it caused me to take note of he and Annie more and more. And as I took note, I didn't remember many Sundays where they miss. And I believe it was because they understood this cry of the psalmist i love the lord for he heard my voice he heard my cry for mercy and i don't think it was something as of late in her, their lives no it's part of the reason why i think they sang the songs they sang what was it 13 songs you sent me i can't remember the exact number but i know that it was more than 11 because the 11th song on the track you sent was the one we 12, 12, and all of them talk about the response to the gospel, the good news of what Jesus has done for them. One of those 12 was played at John Q's service. 
thank God for technology that can touch it up a little bit and make it where it sounds really good in even some 67, 67, some years later. But you see in those songs, you see in their faithfulness to worship an understanding of God's grace, of his mercy, this undeserved love. I, I like it as, as we're reading this psalm, you see that you know, our, we love the Lord for he's heard our voice because he's turned an ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. All the cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh, Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. There's another famous story. I actually shared it about uh, two, three weeks ago in our congregation. It's not a story from history in the modern history at least. No, it's a story of Jesus. It's from Luke chapter 7. If you're able to be with us about uh, now, now two and a half weeks ago, maybe you heard it. It's a story of Jesus being invited to a Pharisee's house. A guy who thought he had it all together. And he wanted Jesus to come to his house to just kind of see if he was a prophet or not. Because he's been hearing lots of things about Jesus. And he just wants to size him up for himself. And Simon, the Pharisee, invited a few other prominent people there. And an uninvited guest showed up. A lady. A lady who the scripture says who had lived a sinful life in that town. Now most of us don't, don't know any sins. Most of us don't know each other's sins, right? Our sins are private. But this lady, the town knew. We don't know what it was. It just the scripture says, Luke the writer says, a, man, a woman who had lived a sinful life. And she begins to weep at Jesus' feet. Then she opens a, an alabaster jar of perfume and, and pours it over his feet and then starts to wipe his feet with her hair. And this Pharisee who's sizing up Jesus says under his breath, <laughs> if this man truly were a prophet, he would know the type of woman it is that's doing this to him. Well, Jesus shows that he's not just a prophet. He is the very son of God. Because he hears the man's thoughts under his breath. And he responds. Hey, Simon, those thoughts you're thinking, let me tell you a story. And then suppose two people owed a certain money lender lots of money. One, one owed 50 days wages, the other 500 days wages. And the, and the money lender said, we're gonna cancel both debts. Simon, who do you suppose would love that money lender more? And Simon said, well, I suppose the one who had the greater debt canceled. And Jesus looks at Simon he looks at the woman and says, you have judged correctly. You see, from the time I came in here, you didn't give me a kiss to greet me, but this woman has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't offer oil uh, over my head, and, but this woman has now not stopped washing my feet with the oil. You didn't offer to wipe my feet, but here she is. And then he looks at the woman and he says, though your sins are many, they are forgiven. Now I tell you that story not, not because 
Annie was any greater sinner than the rest of us. I, I don't. I tell you that because in that same message I shared with the congregation, I think it's very appropriate for all of us to be reminded. We sing Amazing Grace, and, and I didn't want to suggest that today because I was, there are so many good hymns you were already wanting to sing and play. But Amazing Grace was written by John Newton. And John Newton went on to be a pastor. Before his life, before a pastor, uh, he had done some things he wasn't proud of, and it's not for today's sermon, but toward the end of his life, he says, my memory is fading, but two things I recall very clearly. Now remember, this is a pastor speaking, a pastor who proclaimed the good news of Jesus, that Jesus had lived, died, and rose again for the sins of all the world, including himself, that preacher John Newton. He said, there's two things I remember at the end of my life as my memory is fading very clearly. One, that I'm a great sinner. But two, Jesus is a great Savior. I truly believe that's what was at the heart of Annie's life. She understood, just like the rest of us who understand the gospel and understand our standing before God that she was a great sinner just like the rest of us. But she had a great Savior who had died for her sins. And that's why I love, love the music you chose, Dana. Hmm. I mean, first, the, the singing of holy, 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 praising God for who he is, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The peace like a river, knowing that our sins are nailed to the cross and remembered no more, and that one day we will stand before Jesus with that shout of acclamation. And then the closing hymn, a reminder for us who are still alive. There's still a battle there's still a battle going on in our world today between good and evil. Scripture's clear about that. And that Satan wants to do nothing more than to cause us to doubt God's mercy through Christ Jesus. That he wants to sever us from that relationship with God. But I want you as we sing. In fact, I, I invite you to wait to the last stanza to recess out. You can wait longer if you want, Dana. But listen to the, that fourth stanza as it reminds us that though hordes of devil fill this land, though, though life be wrenched away, the devil, all of his hordes of fallen angels, they, they can't not win the day because of Jesus the kingdoms ours forever and I imagine if Annie was still alive hearing my voice she would say amen and all God's people said amen we now profess our faith in this same God merciful God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I invite all who are able to please stand as we conclude our service with the Apostles' Creed, the prayers, and the concluding words. Please stand. I believe in God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Christian Church, and the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. O God of grace and mercy, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death, he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen Dana, Pam, Eric, and Isaac, and all who mourn in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to this family and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Your give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead and the assurance of a holy and certain hope and the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Finally, receive our thanks for Annie and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words and please join with me as first spoken by Simeon as he held the baby Jesus in his arms. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing the hymn, hymn number 656, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. <laughs> 